Chapter 8 Amber Brown, I say to myself in the mirror, you've either got pigeon pox or chicken pox. They're not bug bites. I kind of knew it, but I kept hoping it wasn't happening. Going back into the living room, I lie down on the sofa bed and try to figure out what to do next. I miss my mother. My Aunt Pam is asleep in the bedroom. I'm not sure that she's going to know what to do. After all, she's never been a mother. My father is in France. He's never been a mother either. Some fathers are good when their kids get sick, but my dad always just got nervous and let my mom take care of me when I got sick. And I feel sick. I itch. A lot. My eyes hurt. My head hurts. I'm having trouble swallowing. I think I have chicken pox down my throat. My entire body hurts. I feel like I was run over by one of those wrong side of the road drivers, and now I am road pizza. I wonder if I'm just imagining things. I wonder if it's the jet lag people always talk about, the time difference problem. I don't think, though, that people with jet lag get spots all over their bodies. I wonder if those pigeons did give me some terrible disease. I wonder if there really is something called pigeon pox and if I'm going to die. Here I am in London, and I'm sick. I wonder if there are doctors in, in England. I wonder if my mother is going to have to fly over here immediately. I wonder if my father is going to have to fly here immediately. I wonder if my chicken pox will bring them together. I wonder if I'm ever going to stop itching and feeling so rotten. I look at my body again. There are spots all over me. Closing my eyes, I try to go back to sleep. Maybe this is all a bad dream. A very bad dream. No use. I can't sleep. I open my eyes again. It's no bad dream. It's my worst nightmare, only I'm awake. I want to scream, so I do. Aunt Pam, help! Chapter 9 Dear Justin, I have chicken pox. Itch, itch. Scratch, scratch. I have been stuck in this room for almost an entire week. A total tired week. Here's what Dr. Kelly said when she came to the flat. Doctor the, doctors in this country actually come to your house. She said, One, Amber, you have chicken pox. Two, there is no such thing as turkey pox. Three, put calamine lotion on every day. Four, don't scratch. Five, you'll live. And guess what else? I thought that my mom and dad would immediately rush to my sick bed. Actually, the bed is fine. I'm the one who is sick. And I thought they would see each other and fall in love again. Guess what? That didn't happen. Dr. Kelly said that they didn't have to be here. Aunt Pam said she could take care of me. And she has. So my parents are not together. Boo-hoo. My itches have itches. Boo-hoo. And I am getting so bored. Please write back. Your pal, Amber Brown. I put the letter into an envelope and look over at Aunt Pam, who is reading a book. Monopoly Marathon, I call out. Amber. She looks up. Please, I beg. She sighs. I give her a pleading look. My eyes hurt too much to read. You don't want me to watch too much television. And I'm sick of counting my chicken pox. Just let me finish this chapter, she says. I nod and smile. While she finishes, I look at some of the chicken pox on my right arm and try to figure out what the picture would be if I tried to follow the spots. I think that it would be a picture of a blob. I think that it would be a picture of a blob of throw up or of craters on the moon. Aunt Pam sits down at the board where we've had the monopoly. Aunt Pam sits down at the table where we've had the Monopoly board set up for almost a week. I throw the dice and land on chance. Chance. Go to jail. Move directly to jail. Do not pass go. Do not collect 200 pounds. I feel like I'm already in jail. Aunt Pam rolls the dice. Drat, Aunt Pam says. I've just landed on Mayfair. How much do I owe you? 2,000 pounds, I tell her on our fourth day of Marathon Monopoly. Or you can give me the deed to Liverpool Street Station and the 200 pounds you got for passing go. Add the 2,000 to my tab, she sighs. I look at the paper. She owes 
123,796. That's pounds, not dollars. In England, they have pounds and pence, not dollars and cents. The Monopoly board is different, but that hasn't stopped me. I've got the best properties all in a row. Regent, Oxford, and Bond Streets, Park Lane, and Mayfair. That's Pacific, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania Avenues, and Park Place, and Boardwalk in the American Game. I also own seven other properties. Actually, being a Monopoly jail isn't so bad. Just sitting here, getting money, and not having to think about landing on one of Aunt Pam's properties. Drat. Aunt Pam lands on Whitechapel Road. How much this time? 450, I say, but I'll let you get, get away with it this time. What a pal. Aunt Pam smiles at me. She looks tired. She stayed in with me the whole time. Some of her friends visit, which is nice because they bring me presents. Sometimes it's not so nice because I want her to pay attention just to me. Aunt Pam, I say, thanks. For what, she asks. For everything. She smiles. Thanks for saying thanks. I give her a kiss and then look down at the board. You've landed on my property again, but you can stay rent-free again. The phone rings. It's my dad. He calls every day, and he's coming to visit me since I couldn't go there. I hear about what he's doing. I give him the Daily Monopoly report. Then we have our kissing contest. I let him win. After we hang up, I turn to Aunt Pam. Let's elevate a race. I am so bored with just sitting around playing Monopoly. Okie dokie. She's not only sick of playing Monopoly, she's losing. We get up and go out into the hallway. I go to the elevator on the at the other side of the hall. She stays at the one near our flat. On your mark, get set, go, I yell. We both push our elevator buttons at the same time. My elevator arrives first. I rush in and push the button for the ground floor. In London, the ground floor is first and the first floor is on second. I just know I'm going to win. The elevator stops, but the doors don't open. I look at where it tells what floor it is. It's between five and four. I'm stuck. I push the button. I'm still stuck. Ah, I'm going to die. I should have stayed in Monopoly jail. I wonder how they will get me out. How will they get food to me? What if I'm not out by the time I have to go to the bathroom? Then I think about how I've never heard of anyone dying by being stuck in an elevator. I'll just stay calm and wait. Maybe they'll call one of those TV rescue programs and I'll become a star. Amber, I can hear Aunt Pam yelling to me. Honey, stay calm. Help is on the way. I am calm. Actually, this is the most exciting thing that's happened to me since I got the chicken pox. Justin is going to be so jealous when he hears about this. I do get just a little nervous when the elevator doesn't start up soon. What if they don't get me out by the time I've got to go to the bathroom? What if I miss dinner and breakfast? What if they can't get me out of here when my father comes? And I'll only be able to hear his voice, not see him. The elevator starts again. It works and doesn't stop until it gets to the ground floor. Drat, there are no t TV cameras, but Aunt Pam runs up and hugs me. Aunt Pam, I whisper, I'm fine. Don't make a fuss. Mary, the housekeeper, comes up to us. When my son was a little boy, he got caught in a lift, too, and he cried and yelled, she says. He did? I, Amber Brown, feel very brave. She nods. It was a very hot summer day. He was so warm that he kept taking off pieces of his clothing. By the time we got him out, all he was wearing was his knickers. Knickers are underpants, Aunt Pam explains. We all laugh. Suddenly, I'm not bored. And tomorrow, I'll really be able to see some of the places I've been, I've only been able to visit on the Monopoly board. <laughs>